All right, everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. This is Parts Galore on 8 Mile in Detroit. You guys can own that thing. It's kind of cool. I've never been here before. Some of the commenters in my uh, videos, you know, trailer at radiators, have said I should check it out, and I actually have the opportunity today, so here I am. Also, I kind of want to find a transmission for my brother if I can. Which, there's one, but it's four-wheel drive. My brother's got a 99 Silverado. I think you guys have seen it. Uh, the 4L60 gave up the ghost, unfortunately. And uh, you never know. I don't really want to buy one from the junkyard, but we'll take a look. You never know what you find laying on the ground. This thing's complete. What do we got here? Cable, LM7. 862 heads. That's a good one. You guys should come get this if you're in Detroit. Probably not, but I didn't have to go very far. We got a Ram with my D100 over here. First gen, as they say. This kind of stuff bums me out. Like, clearly, clearly somebody thought they were going to restore this and got started and gave up. That's a bummer. It's never a good time to see people waste their hard-earned money, have their dreams crushed, but also, they probably should have just left the damn thing alone. Unless I'm in a decent bed here. You got another, this one's drive-by wire. Another LM7 probably. Typically, I, don't know, I say this all the time. Not for sale. It's like somebody, somebody left a PCM, but ganked the fuse box. It's a little weird, but who am I to judge? Well, I'm JR, and I do judge, but not seriously. It's all in good fun, people. It's square ass ten. Not in bad shape. Plenty of magnums. The Dodge guys all the time want to build LAs, and I'm like, just, just get a magnum and uh, whack it with nitrous. There's 35 more out in the junkyard. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm not going to find my brother a transmission. It's the smallest yard, it seems like. I already blew through the whole collection of... Uh, pickups these fuse boxes and relay boxes and this is a Grand Cherokee these are pretty nice the ZJ's this is a ZJ the uh, XJ's have them too if you want to uh, you know do some custom wiring and stuff it's a Mountaineer Mountaineers usually had the V8's or tended to have more of the V8s. There you go. So that'll be like a GT40 style, a GT40P heads for you Ford guys. How you doing? Got a XJ, a little Jimmy over here. That's the cool looking 4.3. I don't think they run cool, but they look cooler than the later ones. The Yukon XL. Weirds me out a little bit that they quit calling them Suburbans. It's a drive-by cable. Six lugs, so you know it's a 5.3. They got an envoy over there. Uh, XJ here. So look at this one see it's got the same style they're nice skinny compact they're really easy to rewire for other purposes if you want to you got a hemi out here maybe nobody cut it out yep gen 3 hemi that's cool this place is like a treasure trove they weren't lying 
I mean, it's, you can easily find what you need out here. Another cool fuse box. So I'm getting in the vans now. I guess it's kind of nice that they do this by body type. It does make it so you'll have to walk the whole thing though. All these minivans are definitely good fan donors. They all have electric fans that are fairly high flowing. There we got a LS. What is this? A 5.3? I didn't know vans came with 5.3s. I thought they were all 4.8s. Or, uh, interesting. 03. I accidentally cut my video off. So this one's a one-ton van. That's going to have a 4L80 in it. You can tell by the door tag. See your M code, M30. That's the trans type. That's going to be a 4L60 in this one. So this would actually work for my brother. It's just the problem is we don't know if it's good or not. LM7. Hmm. Yeah, there's no telling what brought it here. That's kind of the problem with pulling a 4L60 in the junkyard. Like, I can take a guess of what brought this guy here. This one, not so much. A little more difficult to tell. I think this is all three. I think it's going to have a digital. Yeah, so I don't even know the mileage on it. Probably not something I would mess with. I mean, I take the engine out of it. faceless, soulless minivans, and then we're back to SUVs. That's weird. <coughs> <coughs> the 4200 that Richard Holdner recently made famous. It's not, not something I want to mess with because uh, we can talk about this for a minute. So the 4200, you can see it's pretty, it's pretty tall. Um, and then it has a front sump pan. If you can see in there, see the pan with the drive shaft passes through it? It's got a front sump pan, so it's not gonna fit in most of your muscle car classic applications. There's no readily available affordable rear sump pan to make it normal like a small block. And then the bell housing on the back's not normal Chevy bell housing either. So like putting a five speed or something like that behind it becomes challenging as well. So, this here, this aviator, this was the hot swap. This is going to be a 32 valve double overhead cam, all aluminum, 4.6 liter. This was the hot swap for Mustangs back in the day. Like people were paying four and five grand for these things. Times they are changing, huh, folks? Got another LS here, 5.3 liters, and a mouse house. SCVs, as always, are reasonable places to look for flex injectors. Gotta have mossy oak. I don't know if that was one or not. I don't know bother. A navigator, if you uh, are die hard, true blue Ford guy, this is a 5.4 liter double overhead cam, 32 valve. All aluminum V8. Uh, the problem with these is they're really, really tall. So if you try to put one on like a Mustang or something, it's going to stick out the hood. Kind of ruins your day that way. I think it stinks like varnish. Let's see what else we got. I got loader coming up the way there. Classic, classic-ish. Caravan. 
These were cool back in the day. Some of them were five speeds and turbos. If you can find one. This is just a normal stupid lane. Three liter V6 probably. Take a spin through the uh, car section and see what we can see over here. I typically don't bother because there's just not much cool in the car section usually. We got a Firebird here. It's probably not anything worth having. Well, maybe it was. Gone now. 3,800. Grand Am. I remember when like every car on the road was a Grand Am. People wanted Grand Ams. People wanted Grand Am GTs. And then some somehow around like 01 or so it all just kind of fell apart for the Grand Am. Alright, this is kind of going to wrap this up for me, I think. I only have limited time here on lunch today, so this was definitely worth checking out. Again, it's part score. Uh, that's a 4.7. Uh, I hate 4.7s. It's another 4.7. Go figure. Um, yes, yeah, part score. This one's on 8 Mile, Detroit, Michigan. If you get a chance, you're in the area or you're in Michigan at all. We got plenty of parts out here. No 4L60 for David, though. Bummer. I'm probably going to rebuild his for him because, you know, he's a decent enough brother. I really don't know. You know, I don't see the point in rolling the dice on a 4L60 for him. So, not when I can rebuild it for him for 300 bucks. Anyway. Ooh, what was that? Oh, that was a Ram. I wonder if it was anything cool. Nope. It's just stupid 360. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the junkyard walkthrough. We'll see you next time on the Driveway Engineer.